afternoon, everybody. So uh, it is February 20th, 2024. This is our February edition of the Building Committee. And I want to thank all of you with the flexibility. Uh, it was kind of hard last week. Everybody in the weather was predicting a, a major snowstorm. And a lot of cities and towns were shutting down early and then come to find out very little snow. So anyhow, because the city shut down last week, we were automatically shut down. Uh, we had to postpone this particular. So that's why we're here today. So again, thank you for your flexibility coming in. Thank you uh, for being here during your lovely February break. So with that said, I think we, by this point, we know most of who we are around the table. I'll skip the introductions. Uh, I, I do want to just turn it over to, to Craig, uh, who has prepared the presentation that all of you should have a copy of. We'll kind of go through, and I think it'll be more of a discussion uh, model today. I think Craig will go through the slides. I'll have some information to share. Uh, I'm sure Helen may have some information to share as well. Uh, and again, just the, the big takeaway for today, I want all of you to sort of have the right frame of mind. Um, with the board meeting this evening, the agenda item on the boards uh, during the board meeting is to vote on DD and design documents. Uh, so we need to have that occur this evening in order for us to maintain our schedule, which is beyond the time to be good. As a reminder, uh, the big discussion slash vote that will be happening this evening on DD will be the building methodology. So are we going to go with a white wood stick build, or are we going to go with a, a pre-fat demo build? Uh, so that's sort of the, the crux of the conversation today. I think what you're going to hear today, I think overall there's some positive news to share. Uh, but we'll get into some of the details, and I'll just be looking for a recommendation, it's not an official vote, but a recommendation from this body uh, that I can stand in the eye and, and, and next to uh, at the board meeting to recommend the board which way they should be voting. Uh, so, with that said, uh, Craig, you want to walk us through? Well, I don't want to steal your thunder. If you want to share the first uh, bullet about the updated funding source. So, I think all of you are aware if you're here in the last meeting, uh, Sean Mahoney from DCR was here. Um, so, a combination of DCR and EEA, which is the Energy and Environmental Affairs. Uh, state agency. Uh, we had a meeting a couple weeks ago. Uh, Helen was part of that meeting. I was part of that meeting. And uh, there was a great discussion. Sean was there along with the assistant secretary to the EEA, is Kurt Gartner, I believe. I think Sean passed his last name. Uh, and we had a great conversation. There was a couple other individuals from uh, the same agency talking about conservation and whatnot. Uh, through that conversation and through follow-up conversations that Sean had with Helen and Matt looking at the design, uh, we did receive confirmation uh, last week, I believe it was, last Monday, that uh, the state has uh, agreed to 1.2 million for this particular project, uh, which is beyond great news. Okay? Uh, and we're gonna get into, you know, there's always stipulations to any state money, okay? We'll get into the stipulations of what we need to do in order to to satisfy the requirement to earn that 1.2 million. That then led to some follow-up uh, conversations. I was part of a meeting uh, last week um, with the EEA, along with the Executive Office of Education. Uh, so the thought process was, the question, speaking of, you should, oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, the question was, how do we get the 1.2 million from the EEA to simplification? And the recommendation of what we, we sort of worked through last week was uh, there's going to be an interstate agency transfer. So that 1.2 million is going to go from the EEA over to the EOE, uh, the Executive Office of Education, and they're going to attach that 1.2 million to one of our existing skills calculators. So we already have that conduit already up and running. Uh, so the deadlines don't change. You know, I've been sort of you know, drumming the, the beat here that our deadline of, of next June, uh, that date does not change. Uh, so not only do we have to spend our current skills capital grants by then, but we're going to also have to spend 1.2 million by then. Uh, there'll be another process that we have to follow to, to ensure that as we spend the 1.2 million, we're spending it towards what you're going to see on, on the future slide. So that's great news. Uh, I think that's going to help lead the conversation today. I think it's going to help lead the conversation this evening with, with the trustees. Um, I'm just going to say right now, then I'll turn it back to Craig. If you look at the second slide, you know, these wood element re requests, bullet number one is the key bullet. Okay, this 1.2 million is assuming that we have a wood construction bill. So technically, if the trustees decide to vote on the metal prefab building, in essence, we're running the risk of losing the 1.2 million. Okay, 
yesterday. So I just want to put that out. Uh, and I'll get into more details later. But, uh, so great news. So thank you to everybody. All, all your hard work has paid off. And the city of Northampton money is still in discussion at this point, but could be, do you have a dollar value that they had talked about? You know? So that that piece, um, I don't have a dollar figure. Um, so as you know, we've been looking at the need for a generator for this particular project, along with some potential electrical upgrades. Uh, as a reminder, the city of Northampton has a capital improvement fund program, okay, lack of a better term, and uh, all city departments have the opportunity in the fall to submit a capital improvement plan and, and, and request for different items, different projects, so on and so forth. Uh, so we did that back in the fall. Uh, none of what we asked for back in the fall pertains to this particular project. Uh, I, I want to thank the mayor, I want to thank the trustees. We've been talking about this project now for obviously several months. Uh, the mayor went back to the city finance director and said, you know, what can we do to help with this particular project? So uh, the city reached out to us to ask, you know, is there a way that the city funds the generator and the electrical need upgrades? Uh, so Tim Smith, our facilities director, submitted all the paperwork. So right now it's in the pipeline. Um, I think between the, the mayor, the, uh, the city finance director, the city council, we'll have to review that improvement. I'm guessing at some point this spring we'll have an official So again, that would be a, a load of our plate of that can be funded to the city. And as part of this EEA, EEA funding um, stream, there are certain, and I want, I want to be uh, careful that we're not talking about the final list. This is a list that's been discussed um, pretty cursory with, with Sean and still needs to be vetted further with that department. So there could be added wood features or additional asks that we're not aware of that. So we're still vetting how much cost is associated with the gift. Um, but as part of this, and I think uh, Alan Matt and Sean, so you have a better idea of what you might be looking for and go through some of these. Yep. Um, sure. So just to be clear, that 1.2 million was uh, a figure arrived at by taking our budget gap, which you know, at the time of DD was 945,000 dollars plus. Sean doing some work to ensure some of these elements were. Needed. Now he's not a cost estimator. So that's, that's where the difference between <coughs> excuse me, the 945 and the 1.2 is. They want to feature, promote, tell the story of wood uh, with their, their gift to this project. So the first one is wood fiber insulation. This is something we had priced early on in the project and something we had hoped to do. Um, so we already had a good number on this. Um, and certainly not a heavy lift to include. Um, we don't have to specify that. The next one is um, Shiplap Parkwood Eastern White Pine Siding. So remember at the DD estimate, we had moved towards a fiber cement board, hardy board. Um, but again, you know, this is a stipulation the state would like to see one feature. Um, so um, helping us with that specification for uh, white pine siding uh, on the exterior of the building. Uh, white pine ship left wainscoting in the shops. So what we had previously was plywood up to eight feet. So again, this is a change in the species. Wanting you know the project again to be specifying local woods. And then finally, um, which is truly an add, we hadn't had it in the project before, um, but again, there was some monies added to to include it, um, some baseboard and trim in classrooms. Again, telling the story of wood, featuring wood, um, and um, you know, a goal of, and we did do some analysis um, on quantities. The goal is to, you know, get up to 10,000 board feet of um, wood is being purchased uh, from Massachusetts. So he will, he will help us with specifications. EEA and DCR have done this on other projects, so there is a template for it. Um, and then when we do our check estimate at roughly 75% CDs, we'll see how this all goes out. We're still in the rounds of the grant is to uh, see. So we'll have further developments on that at the next meeting in short. Um, going on sources and uses. Um, so with this $1.2 million grant that's being discussed, 
it bumps the sources from the project up to seven million two hundred twenty six one hundred million dollars. Um, and if we go back to the PD estimate that was submitted the last meeting, um, you'll see that those numbers start to fall in line with what you have for sources now. So if we look at the uh, Fulberty estimate, we were at five million twenty five and thirty nine at hard costs, which at soft costs in the year seven, almost seven point two. So that's a number we like to see and start to, to jive together. Um, it was also asked um, at the last meeting that we look at a local contractor potential to do a market analysis to see what the local market holds for these numbers. And so we did reach out to several contractors. Unfortunately, many didn't have enough time in their schedule to meet a two-week deadline. Um, and for that reason, we ended up with three individuals uh, that could do the work. Uh, the one we ended up going with was Western Builders. Um, Western Builders gave them a cost estimate based on local market. So they're looking at the last six months. They're taking um, Fulbright's estimate, and they're basically talking back to that, saying, in our experience, square footage for MEPs is this amount, not this amount. And so they came up with a figure um, a little over a million dollars less in this market. I want to caution folks that not, that doesn't mean we're going to see that a bit, but it does mean that there are competitive markets out there right now and are seeing some <coughs> benefits from that competitive market. So you can see somewhere in between these two numbers is what we're thinking. So what, hold on, uh, what building structure is that? That's oh. currently using the wood building structure that was in the DPS. Um, and so we look at a couple scenarios that come out of this. One is looking at does it does the project end up coming in at the estimate or somewhere in that five point nine million dollar range? Um, you end up with a total project cost of seven one nine zero seven three nine. If you look at the market analysis, you end up with a figure that is uh, closer to six million dollars, about one point one million dollar delta between the estimate from Fulbright and what the current market holds in this area. And so I thought it would be smart um, and prudent to do a median cost estimate too. So that's the third uh, option here, just looking at the two costs, the one from Fulbright and the one from <coughs> Western, and coming up with a median cost estimate. So all three of these are possible. What level we'll reach and how much shavings or added cost we will see is going to be at big day um, when we start looking at competitive costs. Uh, the market analysis is certainly worth the money, but it certainly is not big. And so we want to take that with a certain level of cautiousness. Um, but at this point in time, the DD estimate and the sources are in line. I think it's $35,000 difference if we stay with what we know today in the EV estimate at soft costs and uh, take off the sources. So from the standpoint of finances, the school can afford to move forward with EV, knowing that in construction documents, we hope to hold in, massage, and create a much more comprehensive document that will have a much better pricing structure or that um, estimate. At this point in time, it's the best information we have. And the soft cost that's been realigned with uh, some rethinking the management of the project, we brought that up some time ago. This, this soft cost ratcheted down some from the initial numbers. I felt that the, um, the general conditions cost was high, and we did get some feedback on that. Those are actually baked into the estimates. Those are not considered soft costs. Those are part of the construction cost numbers. Okay. And yes. All right. DD and Fogarty had um, brought their number down. I think you've had some feedback yeah, from yeah. Western All right. too. So Correct. we'll find out what the truth is. This says okay, so there. then how about um, the defined mm -hmm. definition of soft costs? We've got the architectural fees, testing fees. Um, 
so forth and so on. The list right now on soft cost is architectural and engineering fees. Um, permitting fees have been waived as far as we're concerned at the moment, so um, that has that has no value. We have uh, subsurface environmental testing that we've already done. We've done hazardous material surveying on building E when we thought the building was coming down. We did hydrant testing for fire protection uh, and flow for fire protection. We did a limited phase one, wetlands, geotech environmental, and project management are all wrapped into the soft costs. And then we have contingencies uh, for soft costs and um, what we assume to be a $5.9 million construction cost. So $1.2 million of soft cost includes all of the engineering, all of the consulting work, all of the due diligence, plus contingencies that we want to keep in place for now. Can I share this with you? All right, thank you. Uh, so that's basically the essence of the story is today we are, we are at almost a balanced budget taking DD into consideration and the sources that we uh, that may change as we move forward and we'll keep everyone updated as that happens. In the last few weeks, we also thought it prudent to pre-qualify prime general contractors. And you can see a slide in there for three individuals who submitted. Uh, this is usually for larger projects. Um, we're trying to qualify <coughs> general contractors that have already experience, they can meet schedule, and they have the experience for the complexity of the project and the size of the project. Projects smaller and more than some large projects do. So there's a there's a, a blend, if you will, of uh, finding the right contractors who have been on this project. So we we thought putting it out and getting pre-qualified contractors that will bid on the project that can show um, uh, a schedule that meets our schedule and shows um, technical abilities that we require for this job. Um, we'll start to look at these three um, contractors and we'll either qualify all three or we'll disqualify someone for a reason and at that point we would have to re-advertise and pre-qualify the game of the um, The only reason we're doing this at this point is just it's coming out in April and May. Bidding is tight during that time. We're in the five colleges region, so we're, we're being all oh, very careful about making sure people are, have us on the right now. This was the best way to do that. And that really is the strategy behind pre ball and the general contractor. Um, so DA Sullivan did submit, Salco did submit, Western builders. Uh, DA Sullivan and Western are here in the area. Uh, Salco is out of Pittsfield, Mass. Who um, is Salco? Right. They're in Pittsfield. Um, that stand for something or is that their name? Oh, so, no, Selco, that's their name. So if you look up Selco, it's one large word, capital letters. Yeah. Um, so those three have submitted. We haven't gone through um, the packages yet. That's what's going to be happening over the next week or two. And at that point, we'll report back whether all three were pre-qualified or if we were at a loss for, for one reason or other with one or two of the, uh, the current. Um, May I ask um, what you did to get these three phone calls, or was it an advertisement? Oh no, it's an advertisement. So you follow 149. So okay, when it's cool. over 10 million, you have that ability to pre-qualify, or you have to pre-qualify. In your case, we're choosing to qualify the strategy. So we advertised it in combines, Got central register. It'll wait for these three respond. Uh, there was a many who <coughs> asked for big documents. Or, or RFQ documents. However, we found that many of the locals didn't have the right detail certification. They didn't have enough single project units. So um, when we have a project that's coming in right now five to nine, we have to make sure the contractors yep. are yep. detail certified. So many fell off from that standpoint alone. Okay. About um, seven or so, right? Fell off? Seven, yeah, seven fell off because of their detail certification. Some are in the middle of updating it, but if anyone ever went through a DCAM update, it takes a while and they have to wait for the paperwork to catch up and it's not going to come out immediately. So, um, there are three, a couple of larger ones, larger GCs, though, CMGCs that it's 
expressed interest but then decided not to. Yes, probably not big enough for them. <laughs> but a little too big for the local guys. Right. We're not in yeah. the sweet spot, yeah. per se. But we'll see. But we, I think we have a good uh, group to pre-qualify, and if they are all pre-qualified, we have a good level of bidding. Yeah. No interest yeah. from Roy Construction and uh, South Hadley. I can give you a copy of the bid list if people are interested in the same thing we did at request. Thank you. <clears throat> so now we're on to schedule. Um, right now we're holding the schedule showing that we're going to be going to see these if approved tonight. Um, and looking at having this group, I'm oh, sorry, the Board of Trustees um, approve somewhere on March 26th, just before, um, or just at the time estimates are due. So we may have to make some changes to those dates, but right now we're trying to hold those. Um, so everything still lines up with a construction start date of somewhere at the end of May. They were the first to be So right now we're good. Um, and we'll keep up to date. Milestone schedules we're working on right now that we should be aware of. Um, so we did the market analysis of the estimate. Um, we shared some of that information with you today. Um, we're looking for approval to start construction documents from the Board of Trustees today if, if um, we're hoping, uh, and final decision on wood or metal. Uh, we're pre-qualifying the GCs as we spoke, uh, and we're going to be looking to finalize that by March 1st. Uh, CD estimate is going to be done by the 26th, and I'm sure um, how it will put on um, October to get that date. Um, and then looking at approval of the CDs uh, by the 27th. Looking for the 26th, hence the push, because I think the 26th is your board of trustees. Is that right? Tuesday. 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 Yeah. So we'd be looking to have the, have the uh, trustees come together on that date for the 26th. So again, if the estimate is a day or two off, we may have to push that a bit more and discuss the change again. Uh, CD's complete on the 2nd. Bidding starts on April 3rd. Um, and that starts with filed subbids, the trades that are required to be bid out. Um, and then prime contractors, which in this case may be the three that we share, will receive those filed subbidders bids, and we will then receive our final bid somewhere around 13th. So, uh, thanks to all the hard work of whoever made that happen by the sense. Second, I'll, I'll share. I can get in trouble, but I, I want to share potentially some more positive news. Uh, you know, back to the DCR EA meeting that we had a couple weeks ago, uh, they were really focusing initially. Uh, the assistant secretary was curious why we weren't going, going with the CLT construction. And it really sounds like the state is trying to invest in this building material. You know, I'm curious why an owner of us uh, would not be going with the CLT. And how would you do a great job? And too expensive. You know, there's just no way to do it. So they're talking about that. And obviously, you heard about the main part of it, which is that 1.2 million. Uh, but then after that conversation, it sort of moved into uh, a different path. Uh, and this other path is. Sean heard loud and clear when he was here that last meeting that, in essence, we're looking at two phases of overall construction. Uh, phase one is what we're talking about right now. You know, building this building, obviously scaled back, uh, maintaining the existing building that we have until we find that money tree out in the pasture. If you ask about to find that tree out there. And once we find that tree, then we can move into phase two, 
which is then constructing that additional classroom, the head house, in the new greenhouse, and then demoing what we have existing. And that's sort of phase two of the that money train. When we were meeting with the state, they were really kind of curious about phase two. And they were curious, uh, is that potentially the phase of the project that we can maybe incorporate some CLT, in fact, CLT, really kind of high on, on that particular technology. So we talked about it. Uh, we sort of talked about long-term vision and so on and so forth. And then the two of the gentlemen who I referenced that were on the call, uh, they focus on conservation. They're kind of curious, uh, no promises in either direction, but I'm sharing this with the committee so you can understand the lines of vision here. Uh, we started talking about conservation restrictions on some of the property that we maintain. Uh, specifically, the demonstration forest, which is adjacent to the VA hospital, which obviously is used by the horticulture program, so it's already a lot. Uh, and this notion of, would we be interested in perhaps applying a conservation restriction on that acreage, it's 182 acres in the city of Northampton. You can imagine a price tag on such acreage in this particular city. Uh, if we applied for a conservation restriction, we would still maintain the current use of that property, which is educating our horticulture students, uh, so we would not lose that opportunity. But you know, we would lose the opportunity to sell that property to a, to a developer to make money. Uh, so it potentially could be a win, win obviously a win for the state, that they are increasing the conservation land in the state. Um, and it could be a win for the school that there could be a monetary deal made. And, and perhaps that deal made could then be used to complete phase two. Uh, so I share that with the committee. Uh, and I, I shared it with the smaller team. And I was still kind of on the fence with the metal building, to be perfectly honest. But working long term, <coughs> uh, knowing that this could be a reality down the road, I think it makes a lot more sense that. Thank you to the state, they gave us 1.2 million. If we go with the wood structure, I hate to lose that 1.2. I think it's, it's a great agreement for the board of trustees to have that, that agreement with the state. But then long term, we, we may have a, another deal with the state uh, that could finally complete this particular project. So I just share that. Again, nothing set in stone, but I'll talk about some good news and maybe more good news on top of that. So I just, I just share that with you. Point of reference. I ask a detailed question? Um, and I'm asking because on page one we're going from the XPS foam insulation. So we're going to have cavity insulation now. Uh, I would call it cellulose, right? Um, is there going to be a, a continuous exterior insulation? Is that required? I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, we did have it considered. Yeah. Well, two things. Um, if it were me at DD, I would want to know that right away because it's going to affect how that whole thing comes together. But secondly, um, there's a company in Maine that's trying to do continuous wood insulation. Mm -hmm. You've heard of them. They finally, so it's a, it's a often used project product in Germany. Uh, it's a great product. It's wood. Uh, it's stiff, like um, foam insulation. It, it insulates better. It doesn't catch on fire, um, and thus. Thus far, the difficulty in getting it has been that it's in Germany, and it never makes sense to yeah. ship insulation. Right. Uh, somebody in Maine is finally making it. They say they've got it ready to ship. So. Do you think I don't. Know that? Investigated but this I will. early on, and was <coughs> trying to hold it out as you know, maybe you'd like to provide this. Because this is when we were still in the phase of maybe we get materials for free. Um, originally, there was interest, but I don't recall from. I'll get you that information. Yeah, that'd be great. And, so, it, and it could be a selling point. Tom, that would be on the exterior. It would. Which so you got the framing, and then you have this product, and then the finish. Which siding. let it be clear, if you can hit your uh, energy code numbers without continuous insulation, I don't think it's in our budget or or a wise move to wrap it in insulation. However, if you need that to hit your energy. So Northampton, of course, is an opt-in specialized food community. And so yes, we have to get all of the targets um, you know, and all of that other yeah. stuff. But you know, so yeah, continuous for to start to these houses. Okay. Okay. Is that funny? What you see on the outside of the fall?
Um, five sauces? Yeah, yeah. five sauces. Is that German? Is that product? Okay. Yeah. It's available in yeah, one place. Exactly, and that place is across the yeah. ocean. Yeah. yeah, okay. But now, I mean, On the point of reference, I, I can't imagine a debate, but I'm, I'm open for the debate. Uh, you know, we didn't talk about alternates, and I think there's really only one alternate that we could even potentially consider. Read right my mind. Uh, so we talked about the, the radiant floor heating. Uh, so the last estimate that we have in Fogarty included the plumbing inside the concrete slab. Uh, it was not going to include the system. That was an alternate. Knowing where we are currently with potential revenue sources and potential estimates that we have now in front of us, you know, I, I'm standing up to, to advocate that you know, if and when the board votes tonight to move to CD, that we include the reading floor heating as part of the, the project and just get that done. Uh, so I just want to put that out there. Anybody wants to disagree or I'll definitely second that. I don't disagree, but was that the entire slab being radiant? Just the shops. Just the shops. Just the okay. Shops. <laughs> okay, why just the shops? Oh, that was that was the ask. And I think and it's a wise think about, ask. Yeah, think about where it's most needed. Well, right. Agreed. But I was. Oh, radiant, radiant. Um, can actually be a little uncomfortable in kind of softer environments. It's not actually that warm. So in a shop, it makes sense. Uh, but in, you know, like people do it in their houses and they're surprised that their floor still feels cold. It's not actually that high temperature. So put it right in the thing feels so I got it. Well, like it's, bathroom. Bathroom. it's not, they more. want it to be like, <laughs> they want it to be like cooking hot and they're surprised that it's just a steady, you know, uh, and um, would you suggest it would not going to cost any more to at least get the tube in inside the classroom so because you're still going to have to buy a boiler to heat the shop the rest of it is negligible you're already spending the money on the that. infrastructure and all we're going to spend is another couple of thousand dollars on tube in and the rest of the floors you know the radiant done right will work very well and the biggest advantage of that is it only goes up about the side. It doesn't go over the ceiling like the rest of it. Uh, and our office did an estimate too on the plumbing and the HVAC budget, and we came within 5% at lower. So that was a, they're, they're probably right on target. We have two alternates then. We have one for the additional classroom gradient, and then the mechanical infrastructure. We're going to have to discuss the alternates and we've got to make sure we yeah. number them properly because you have to take them in order. Yeah. You can't two, three, and then one. You've got to go one, two, three, correct? That's that correct. That is correct. I would suggest that where we are right now, we show it in the documents and when we have Fogarty price, we can break out pricing. Okay. And if it looks like we're in trouble again, then we take it out as a as an alternate. add alternate. And we can pay, you know, do it partial or the whole thing. But I think this particular ask has been on the table for a really long time. And given the more comfortable feeling we have right now, let's get it in the project. Again. Well, I guess I was somehow missed that or missed that memo. I thought it was the whole, the whole thing. The okay. whole thing. Thank you, Mr. Moran. I'd like to see the whole thing. It's not going to cost that much more. I will be sharing this evening at the board. Uh, and Craig did a great job sort of summarizing potential revenue versus the estimates. Uh, and it's still a great unknown to the uh, But one of the unknowns is really not an unknown. We know that in phase one, we are still maintaining the existing IP building. And I think if you take any time down there to walk around, you'll see that, that particular structure is not the best structure out there. They need to be some time and effort and money put into that particular building to make it sustainable a period of time until we can finish phase two. So my recommendation as a superintendent would be if we do have remaining funds in the revenue source that we uh, 
try to apply some of that to that existing building. You know, that we may have to have for the next week or so. I just put that out there that if we start to compare or weigh um, alternates, you know, one of the alternates is going to be capability for a period of time. So, um, well, we couldn't hear about the funds for that purpose. And the trustees, would, it would be highlighted in regards to the budgets. Uh, I would recommend that. time and effort and there's been a process. We have a positive meeting. Much better than that. <laughs> hey Craig, just a quick procurement question. So we pre-qualified those three GCs, but not additional yet. Not yet. They're not, additional yet. not yet. But when when we do the bidding, other GCs can also bid, correct? No. Only those three? No, no only these three. Thank you. Have a relationship with Alan Rowe or Alan Roney? How do you, how do you pronounce it? Alan Roney, thank you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the little Roney. Did you have any talk to them and say, see if they had any interest? Mostly private work these days, mainly doing their own private development work. Yeah, right. They've taken they over the worst street, the uh, main area, and they purchased about uh, 30, 40 properties wow. in the building. So uh, they did reach out. I did talk to one of their estimators. They did ask a few questions, but at the end of the day, they did not take a plan. Did you hear from Tierney? Uh, they did. They did. They did. They did. They Forest no longer exists, right? Yeah. They're gone. <clears throat> I'll show you the list. I think the list represents a pretty good um, level of um, covering this area and, 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 and most of the, the contractors you can see in this area, um, they all seem to be interested. It just came down to the cost in, in many cases. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? We can adjourn. I appreciate it.